Now, having demonstrated that space is a, is a thing, uh, just like the color red is a thing, um, properties are material things as well. They uh, are only properties by virtue of being things that can be sensed and measured, right? So, you know, I, I've obviously demonstrated that space is, is a thing. Uh, now, some people could say, hey, there's an apple and a, and a book on a tabletop. The apple brings the three-dimensionality. The book brings three-dimensionality. No, those have to be three-dimensional, just like they have to have colors from the set of colors. And, and if they're invisible, or if space had the potential to have infinite amount of dimensions, that's what someone is saying, basically. It's like, oh, the apple brings the three dimensions. Oh, so I could just take this five-dimensional object and put it on the table, and then there's five dimensions there. No, I don't think so. So having demonstrated that to the point where any reasonable, rational person would agree, I would like to extend my statement to the fact that Everything certainly must be wave-like, because if you have a phenomena, let's say you had a phenomena where there was a two-dimensional representation of it. Hey, it creates circles. And there was a three-dimensional representation, of it, which was like, hey, look, all of it together is a sphere. You would say it was three-dimensional because the three-dimensional thing you could take a slice of it and explain the two-dimensional thing the two-dimensional thing there's you can't take a slice of it there's no part of it that explains the three-dimensional thing so it's the higher dimensional thing that that works it's like in that old cartoon flatland i think it was a book too but it was this great cartoon and uh, this this uh, shape lived in a two-dimensional world and he, he meets this circle and the circle can grow bigger and smaller he says look i'm actually a sphere I'm not growing bigger and smaller. I'm just going through your dimension. <clears throat> you see a two-dimensional slice of me, which how would he see? How would he get over to see it? Uh, but anyway, and uh, it's something like that. I mean, with... with uh, they, so when you, you shine white light through a slit you see diffraction. Through a prism, you th see this um, refraction that makes a rainbow. Um, those are wave phenomena. The two-slit interference, you see a wave phenomena whenever you shine a bright light through there. Now, when you lower the energy down to the point that you're dealing with this Planck constant issue of, you know, whole units of energy, um, you start to see just a speck of light at a time. You know, the, the particle, the evidence of the particle. You never see the particle shooting by, but you see this evidence of the particle. And I liken that to if a, 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 a small tsunami, a rogue wave, is coming up to the beach, and it comes up and it hits the boardwalk, and it knocks just one board off, splashes against the boardwalk, knocks one board off. In the morning when they come down there to look at the boardwalk, they're like, oh, look, <clears throat> it looks like a single cannonball must have hit this board. It just knocked it clean off. All the rest of them are in place. Now, the only mystery in this right now, to use this metaphor, is why just one boardwalk board? The answer would be, well, the probability. The probability was that one board walk and so one got knocked well but why is why would a wave hitting the whole thing have a probability even if there was a hundred thousand feet boards in the boardwalk and it was one in a hundred thousand there could be zero it could be two or three and in fact this kind of effect you do see with probabilism so the weird thing about the puzzle part uh, the riddle is just that there's a covariance, right? Um, variance is the amount of, like, randomness, uh, error, you could possibly say, or entropy in a measurement. The plus or minus part. That, this is the variance of data. Covariance is when neighboring values have a correlated noise. Their errors are actually correlated, right? And so... 
the probability of that wave knocking a board off was exactly one board's worth of probability, and it knocked off one board. Now, if a wave came up and it was not, you know, it only had a 100,000th of the strength in any one point that it takes to knock off a board, it wouldn't knock off any boards in classical uh, situation. But in the real situation, somehow it can come up with this sort of weak probability, but since the whole probability adds up to one, it'll go ahead and knock off one board. It's it's one one hundred thousandth of a chance of each board, and one board's going to get knocked off. That's the only riddle. Um, but it has to be waves because a wave can be a cross-section. A wave can come up to a boardwalk and knock one thing off. But in the sand, there's the pattern of the wave coming. If a, if a cannonball is flying in there and hits the one board and knocks it off, that doesn't explain the pattern that's left on the beach. So QED proved my point. I'm sure every rational person now agrees with me in every way possible. I just don't see any other way that it could possibly be going with these graphics, my sound's working, so Hythlete is going to be like, good job, your sound is working, and you didn't even uh, feign checking it, and you've got a green screen, it's working, that's pretty crisp for uh, an amateur, and look at those pictures of waves, you are obviously typing a term into Google Images as your background, very clever, efficient, saving of time and whatnot, QED proved my point, it's over.